All right, let's get started. Thanks for joining us today for today's webinar, Vault, Learn About Secure Secret Store and Functions. You want, just for some housekeeping rules, by the way, feel free to submit your questions throughout the training, but we'll save the last 15 minutes for a Q&A. My name's Grace, and I'm the Marketing Manager at PubNub, and I'll be joined today by Oz and Craig. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves, guys? Hi, guys. I'm Oz. Uh, I'm the Product Manager for the Functions team. Howdy, y'all. Um, I'm Craig B. I'm a backend engineer for the Functions team who worked on the Vault feature. And I'm here to answer any questions regarding Vault. So we do have a lot to review today, but don't worry about taking notes so much. Um, as a follow-up, we'll be sending this presentation and rec recording to you guys. So kind of sit back, relax, and enjoy today's presentation. As far as our agenda goes, I'll be giving a quick introduction to PubNub before Oz dives into more details about PubNub Vault. Be highlighting great use cases and at the end giving a short coding demo with a live Q&A. So I know some of you may already be familiar with PubNub, so bear with us as I give a quick introduction to PubNub. So PubNub can connect any device in the world in under 250 milliseconds. In the end, though, we're helping developers with real-time innovations. So let me tell you a little bit about how. So five years ago, users didn't mind waiting 15 minutes for their device client to request data from the server. But keeping users waiting is a thing of the past now. Real-time technology and apps that deliver information to users as it happens is part of our everyday lives. People expect to receive data in real time with always on connectivity. So examples of that could be geolocation apps like Uber, a medical alert and chat application like Hippocrates or Athena Health, and an Internet of Things application like Nest. Incidentally, PubNub powers many of these companies' real-time applications, including Yelp, Athena Health, ESPN, Pocket Gems, Coca-Cola, eBay, and many more. Real-time technology has become integral to many of our favorite products, and as a result, we often don't recognize it as a specific feature. It's just simply expected. While customers and users are demanding real-time products now, building out the required infrastructure is very challenging. On the security side, the requirements are different than for traditional request response infrastructure. How do you encrypt data without introducing latency? On the reliability side, how do you deliver 5.9's SLAs when you have data centers around the globe? How do you deal with mobile devices that can lose connectivity sporadically? And on the scalability side, how do you scale while remaining sensitive to latency, geographic distribution, global synchronization, and the ability to handle spikes? Building out this infrastructure by yourself takes time and expertise, which can easily get expensive and detract you from your core competencies, like customer innovation. PubNub can enable application developers to leverage the best real-time technology without having to earn a PhD in real-time infrastructure. PubNub has been in business for around six years now, and we power some of the biggest and best innovators who require real-time technologies all around the world. Whether it's social apps, IoT, chat or collaboration, real-time is everywhere. As the largest distributed computing network in the world, we are already processing five times the amount of data than Twitter, and we're just getting started. With over 2,000 customers and on 330 million unique devices publishing and receiving streams of data, our customers are finding new ways to innovate and monetize these streams. Let me give you a quick overview of PubNub's major features and how it can work within your environment. PubNub takes its core of PubSub type low latency bi-directional communications and build several features on that to help developers create all sorts of real-time innovations even faster. It wraps this platform of messaging and related features in a tight layer of security that includes fine-grained access control. You can easily integrate PubNub into your larger deployment, whether it's based on-premises or in the cloud on GCP, Azure, or AWS via PubNub's gateways. Here are a bit more details on the major features in PubNub's platform. First, we have the gateway support integrations to the major cloud hosting providers, as well as mobile push integrations to Apple push notification services and Google Cloud messaging. There's presence detection, which provides presence and state functionality and makes it easy to answer the question of who's online and what are they doing. Blocks Catalog offers dozens of partner-built, open-source, serverless applets to help you innovate on PubNub more quickly. Stream Controller allows you to receive messages on multiple channels from a single network connection. This vastly extends one's ability to connect to and manage large numbers of streams while keeping bandwidth costs to a minimum. Storage and Playback, also informally referred to as a history API, 
enables you to store messages as they are published and retrieve the previously published messages at a later time. Functions provide service logic within PubNub's network, so you can apply programming logic to streams of data. Oz is going to go a little bit more into detail of that in just a second. PubNub can support all types of real-time use cases, but we see the majority of our successful customer deployments in three core areas. Chat and collaboration, IoT device control, and real-time updates. Now I'm going to give the mic over to Oz, who can give you a little bit more information about PubNub functions and Vault. Hi, everyone. Um, so I thought I could give you a five-minute summary of what functions are, just in case it's your first time attending one of our webinars. PubNub Functions is a globally distributed serverless microservices infrastructure that delivers extremely low latencies. We actually take pride in delivering under 10 milliseconds time to first line. What this means is that you make a request to our infrastructure or publish a message to our uh, to a channel, and we execute the code on this payload in under 10 milliseconds. Here's a, a little diagram of our network. Uh, on the left side, you can see that you'd be publishing uh, data from any device you can use, uh, in any device you want, into our network. And within our network, you will execute the business logic you provided um, on the data that you just put into our network. And on the right side, you can consume the output of this data using any device. Again, this could be your backend a laptop or a IoT device here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, PubNav functions. So PubNav functions allow you to process and program data as you stream it. This removes the necessity of actually ingesting data at a server and then routing them to places where you would process it. We deploy your functions globally, and this allows you to go to production scale in minutes. We have 15 points of presence around the world, and this ensures us uh, to give you the lowest latency possible. You can trigger PubNav functions via in-network events, such as a publish to a channel, or uh, just by making HTTP requests via REST APIs. We actually brought in uh, built-in statefulness, and this is my favorite feature, by giving you a globally distributed key value store. Last but not least, uh, PubNav functions are enterprise grade, uh, compliant with SOC2 and HIPAA, uh, and they, they give you out of the box redundancy. Let's talk a little bit about Functions Vault now. Functions Vault is a secret store that allows users to store their secrets in an encrypted fashion. What does this mean? Why did we build this? Um, very commonly, uh, software infrastructures need to talk to each other and in order to talk to each other, they need to trust, they need to trust each other. And um, this, is, this is made possible uh, via a process of authentication. But how do you actually bring your authentication credentials to uh, the public infrastructure and feel confident that they won't be stolen? Enter PubNav Vault. Uh, we allow you to bring these secrets on, and we store them in an encrypted fashion. And we only decrypt them when you request them in the functions runtime. This allows end-to-end -end security for your API credentials, and now you can connect PubNav functions to any other uh, third-party API or uh, infrastructure that you, op you operate. Your secrets are set once. They cannot be edited or modified once they are set. And we are utilizing AWS KMS, uh, and by way of that, we're we are using the AES G GCM uh, for the encryption and hardware security modules for seeding the encryption algorithm with a random number. Um, I'll mention a couple of use cases for uh, PubNav Vault now. As I mentioned, um, the most common use case is two different software infrastructures talking to each other, and this is usually done via API credentials. But you might want to actually encrypt a payload that's coming out of the uh, PubNav Functions infrastructure. In that case, you could be uh, storing your encryption keys in the PubNav vault. Last but not least, uh, some legacy systems, systems still accept API calls via username and password, um, the basic HTTP authentication. 
And popular vault would be a use, good use case for storing the username and password as well. Let's dive in for a quick demo now. For those of you who have not seen this uh, screen before, this is the editor for uh, the functions. And what you see here is a JavaScript function. And I'm going to walk you through it. So on the left side, you have the metadata for the function you're editing, you're uh, working on. And you see the giant save button. Uh, it's pretty self-evident. It allows you to save the changes you make over here. And this uh, little drop-down menu allows you to pick the log level, which we uh, chose debug because we want you guys to see everything. Your log logs will be printed over here. And our secret store has a link right here. And I'll, I'm going to show you that in a second. And right below the My Secrets button, you can see the test payload uh, title. And we have a little REST client that allows you to test your function as you're building it. And we'll play with that in a second as well. Uh, top right side, you see the stop module and restart module. This allows you to um, restart and uh, put into effect any changes you might have made to your function. So um, let's walk, quick, walk you quickly through this function that uh, we have it ready already. So uh, as you can see, this is a JavaScript um, ES6 style, ES6 syntax uh, function. And we're taking two arguments, and this is the function body that's going to process these arguments. So the request object uh, in the public infrastructure gives you pretty much everything you would expect from uh, the request object in any HTTP framework. And uh, XHR. Uh, you, you may already be familiar with it, is the module that allows you to make HTTP networks outside of our infrastructure. And Vault is your little secret store that allows you to reach your um, encrypted credentials. So um, before I ju jump into this, uh, I'm going to show you the secret store real quick. So what we have here is an API key that I've already entered, but we're going to enter a new one. Um, and as you can see, there's no way we can actually see the value for my API key or edit it in any fashion. If you want to change it, you would have to delete it and then um, enter it again. This makes sure that your secrets are only decrypted when they're in the function's runtime demanded by your, uh, the, the code you write. So when you go to portal or if you maybe have collaborators on your project and you have multiple users logging onto your admin portal, um, when they pull this screen up in the browser, no decrypted values will be uh, coming to our portal and nothing, no one can um, uh, steal them via a man in the middle attack or any kind of sniffing is possible in this fashion. So let's enter a new API key. For demo, my demo credential. You can assume that, actually, let's call it a token. You can assume that um, my demo token for HTTP bit. So imagine we are making a request with a third party API, and um, you need to store your token somewhere in a secure fashion because maybe you're paying for the service by uh, transactions and you don't want others. Um, using your transactions and uh, basically stealing your money. Um, so we hit save and we see that um, our key is saved. And now we're going to use this key to make a request outside of the PubLab infrastructure. So I'm just going to copy this key because we refer to the keys, we refer to the secrets we had the keys we saved them with. And let me explain the rest of the code now. Um, if you're not Familiar with promises, this piece of code may look a little bit weird, but uh, don't worry about it. I'll walk you through. So promises are an asynchronous way of executing functions in the JavaScript runtime. Uh, what this means is that when you execute a function, it immediately returns, and you have to provide a callback function in order to collect the uh, output of this function execution. 
So, in order, let me actually explain some more by just concretely showing you what's happening here. Vault dot get my API key. Actually, I'm just going to replace that with the key that we just entered. Vault dot get um, API key for demo token makes a request to our backend um, and then retrieves the encrypted value for API key for demo token and then uses the KMS to decrypt that. After which it comes back to the runtime and it will pass on this value and uh, this it, it will pass on this value to this function that we have provided over here. What, what this means is that API key is an argument, and this is the function body that's going to execute this, uh, actually, this one, yeah, let's see, yeah. Um, this is the function body that's going to process this incoming value, which is the API key, and that will be the decrypted version of your secret. Uh, what happens next is not very interesting, but I'll walk you through nevertheless. Uh, we will be constructing an HTTP options object, and over here, we will add the API key as a header. Um, this might be familiar to most of you uh, if you work with third-party APIs. Uh, API keys are usually um, provided uh, as a header. And then the last line makes the actual request. Uh, and for example purposes, we are making this request to HTTP bin.org uh, forward slash get. So it's not a real third-party API request. Um, and what happens here is the request being made to HTTP bin and the response being collected in the callback that we're passing to our promise. So I'm just going to run this code for you now. Um, actually, we made some changes, so I'm going to hit save. We saved it successfully, and then we get a little warning here that our module is actually running with an older version than the the one that we recently saved. So we restart this module. And this is fantastic. In the same second, it's actually deployed in 15 points of presence. And uh, now we go to our little um, REST client and hit the Get button. And we see that the, um, the request executes and the we console log the body so you can see it. The API key is um, decrypted and added as a header um, in this in this request that we're logging over here. Um, this is about it for the demo. Uh, I can stay on the screen if you guys have any questions about the demo, uh, or we're you know also open to taking any general questions that you might have. Well, there is a quick question I saw. How mm -hmm. do we get access and how do you get started on it? Uh, currently, it's available to all our customers. And all you have to do is go to your functions editor and hit the My Secrets button. And um, you will be presented with a dialog that allows you to enter your secret. Um, and that's about it. After that, you can start playing with it. And we, we have it uh, documented in our uh, functions documentation. So. Feel free to um, even copy paste the example we have in the docs and start playing with it. Cool. Um, what's the cost associated with the use? That's a great question. Um, currently, it's only charged as a KV store transaction, uh, and um, that's the only uh, price attached to it. So there's PubNub provides you a KV store and allows you to actually, um, I'm, I'm just going to stay on the screen, uh, allows you to store your um, inf information on the PubNub infrastructure by way of um, providing you a key value store. And um, so very similarly, uh, we charge you for the, uh, ch charge you for storing secrets in the same way that we charge um, KV store. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to submit them in the little comment box down below where it says questions. Um, we'll be, we have another couple of minutes if you have any questions. Otherwise, 
We can Feel actually do too. a little interview with Craig and talk about what were you know the most exciting parts of this project for him. Yeah, for sure. Because it yeah. might be really interesting to talk about that. Absolutely. Um, so this project um, allowed me to further um, <clears throat> learn about cryptography and specifically a um, number of ways in which we can prevent things such as replay attacks, um, making sure requests are signed to a certain degree, um, and decrypting such and validating the responses. Um, so we've instituted a number of things. Um, obviously, HTTPS, you've got your SSL. We use HMAC um, for our signing of our requests and um, um, most of the payload um, included as well. Um, Additionally, to prevent replay attacks, excuse me, um, the use of nonces have that added. If you're unfamiliar with nonces, they effectively just allow you to prevent um, someone from taking whatever request you sent in a short amount of time and replaying it. Um, if you add some sort of information that timestamps it, it prevents someone else from replaying the attack unless it's within a very small window of time. Um, so that was pretty exciting. Um, other than that, um, man, that sounds like a lecture and uh, encryption <laughs> uh, squeezed into one minute. <laughs> um, one last thing that was really cool. So um, haven't had never worked with um, Amazon's KMS. Um, Amazon has this secret store um, service that um, is actually backed up by something called HSMs. They're called hardware security modules. So rather than just having, um, you know my computer or one of our servers, um, which are, you know, they're big servers, but um, Amazon has massive dedicated um, hardware servers that allow you to make very, very specific encryption keys um, that then we ask them to make for us. We don't even know what it is. We just alias a name that we use based on your customer information and say, hey, give us this, uh, uh, this, um, this um, encryption method. Here's the value to encrypt. Give us the encrypted value back, and we don't even know what the heck um, was used to encrypt it. So it's all <laughs> obfuscated from um, our point of view. So ensuring, again, that your information can't be um, decrypted. Yeah, that, that makes it so much more secure, right? Because um, we, we do not operate hybrid security modules in our office, but Amazon's hybrid security modules make it basically impossible to recreate the uh, I think that's, that's about the creation of random uh, numbers, right? To, yeah. to see the algorithms. It's <laughs> that's testing that's, my math a little bit more. But, yeah. <laughs> so we got a few questions that came in, guys. So the first question is, what are the limitations for the length of secret key and value? It's Currently, it's the same length as the KV store values, which um, I don't have on the top of my head right now. Um, Possibly Oz. Oh, oh I, I think I think the keys are limited to 256 characters, and the values are um, up to 32 kilobytes. Another question: Do you have any audit logs on who updated keys and when? We currently do not have this feature. Uh, I think it's a it's a very cool feature to have, um, and uh, it, it's in our roadmap. But um, we're actually thinking about a, even a cooler feature before this, so I just want to drop that real quick. Um, you can you can imagine that um, if an, an, if an attacker gained control of your uh, public account, they, they could still be leaking this in in certain ways. Uh, but the one thing we're going to add is the security model that browsers have, which is domain specific cookie sharing. So we're going to make it possible to associate your keys with certain domains, and from then on, you will only be able to share these secrets with communication in certain domains. This could be your server's IP or uh, a third-party API uh, domain. So we will basically be enforcing the, um, the domain-specific security uh, model that uh, browsers implement within the functions infrastructure. But um, to, to answer your question, again, uh, we, we currently do not have it. But it's in our roadmap, and um, it, it'll be. I think it'll be an exciting feature to implement. Another question: Can someone get access to KV Store and delete all the secrets? And how can it be restored? What happens? So they don't. The KV Store doesn't have implicit access to the um, the secret store. Um, I'm, I'm. I'm actually. Yeah. No, that's right. correct. Um, that's correct. There is. There is no way um, through the functions code um, on when you're publishing through a function to reach that um, 
um, key value store um, that's specifically for the secrets that you store, not the blocks KD store. Um, they are in two different places. Yeah, and uh, and we also do not provide any APIs to programmatically delete from the vault module. Um, so they could only be deleted using the uh, admin portal uh, of PubNub. Effectively, the portal has your add, removal, and yeah, no, that's really it. And, and the it, listing yeah. of what the keys are called, um, the, the names. Otherwise, exactly. the only thing you really do in a function is decrypt. Yeah. That's it. All right. Well, thank you so much for some of your questions today, guys. Um, feel free to reach out to either Oz or myself if you have any further questions. Uh, as Oz mentioned before, we have an awesome free tier to get started uh, with using PubNub and PubNub functions. We'd love for you to get your hands on it, uh, experiment, tell us any of the cool projects you're working on, and reach out with any questions you might have. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today, and we hope to see you at the next one. Thanks.